In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But our Father, make us bearers of your good news about the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May the message we proclaim be a lived experience of his life, which brings conviction, forgiveness, and enhancement of the kingdom. We make our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our culture cases today, we are reflecting on the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark's Gospel. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. On the occasion of his ascension, Jesus entrusts his disciples a farewell responsibility to share the events of his life, his death, his resurrection, and ascension into heaven. He entrusts them this message to share to the whole world. Let us now contextualize our pericope for our reflection. Let us also look at the ascension itself. And the answer is in Christ. Ascension is the culmination of the earthly mission of our Lord Jesus Christ and the return to the Father in heaven. With his ascension, Christ withdraws from the earth and offers a new mode of his presence amongst us. His multiple presence, which is free of earthly limitations, such as time and space. Apropos, during his human as well as his resurrected life, Jesus was encountered as a singular presence in time and space. However, with his ascension, Christ is no longer limited to time and space. He is wherever and whenever in spirit. The ascension is therefore not only a great fact, it is also a great factor in the life of Christ and the church, as it is indicative of a new relationship between Jesus and his Father and between Jesus and his followers. It is not only a simple physical relocation from earth to heaven. It is the consummation of his redemptive work here on earth, a new paradigm of his presence amongst us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now revert to our Bible text for further reflection. Our text reads in part, Jesus showed himself to the eleven and he said to them, Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news to all creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the foregoing passage appears to be a brief summary of the Great Commission in comparison to the Gospel of Matthew, namely where it says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
teaching them to observe all things that I command you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Matthew's gospel uses the word nations, and Mark's gospel uses the word creation. However, both amount to the same thing. It is a ministry beyond Israel. A mission beyond borders to the gentle world as well. Wherever there is mankind, the good news ought to be proclaimed. And the content of the good news is the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. As well as the implications of the message which calls for repentance and forgiveness of sins. The disciples, we inclusive, have a duty and responsibility to proclaim the good news of salvation as commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ. And this good news offers forgiveness of sins and the eternal life. And Jesus wants in to say that he who believes is but will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God offers to every creature pardon and eternal life on his death, namely through repentance and belief in the person of Jesus Christ. And as an outward sign, baptism is conferred on the one who believes in Jesus Christ. God's mercy is pure and his grace is boundless. However, if mankind rejects God's mercy, he or she does it at his or her, or her own peril. And God cannot be blamed for choosing not to be saved. Jesus further says, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new languages. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. But about sisters in Christ, in the Old Testament, signs and wonders saved primarily to testify or demonstrate God's power. Yet, in the New Testament, signs are used to validate or to authenticate the ministry of Christ's disciples. The signs mentioned in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, with the exception of drinking deadly substances, seem to be derived from the stories in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 16 tells of Paul exorcising a demon. Acts chapter 2 tells of disciples speaking new languages. Acts chapter 28 verses 1 to 6 tells of Paul being bitten by a poisonous serpent with no ill effects. Saul's eyesight was restored by the laying on of hands in Acts chapter 9 verses 12, as well as 17 to 18. The miraculous manifestations of Mark, chapter 16, verses 17 to 18, who accompany those of the 11, later to include Paul, who as an apostle believed in the resurrection and was obedient to the suffering for the gospel. It be the apostles, did the signs by the power and the will of God. Further, Jesus says, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, healing the sick was an important part of Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus' disciples are to be concerned 
not just the condition of the spirit or the soul, but also the person's physical being, Urutoshi. That is derived in part from the kind of compassion that arises naturally if we have agape love for the other person. Our love will not allow us to sit idle and watch one another suffer. If we have the means to that, this concern is also derived from the Jewish understanding of the person as integral, both physical and spiritual. The signs of an apostle were signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. These were to authenticate apostolic credentials, not the reception of eternal life. The answers of the Christ saw them the Lord, after he had spoken to them, was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. They were sent out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word by the signs that followed. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 19 and 20. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, after Jesus giving his mandate to the disciples, to be his witnesses, Jesus ascended into heaven and disappeared into a cloud. The cloud recalls the divine presence at the transfiguration in Mount Tabor. Confirm Matthew chapter 17, 1 to 8. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 8, as well as Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to and it is reminiscent of the Shikina of God, the glorious divine presence among God's people in the Old Testament, particularly in the tabernacle. This symbol of the crowd makes it clear where Jesus belongs, namely the divine presence of God. Jesus enters into communion of power and life with the living God, into God's dominion over space. Hence, he has not gone away, but now and forever, and by God's own power, he is present with us all the time. The word was received up or was taken up, emphasize the fact that what is happening is the work of the Father. What is happening here is at the Father's initiative. It is the Father who received the risen Christ into heaven. It is the Father who makes it possible for the risen Christ to take his seat alongside the Father. This also signals the successive completion of Jesus' work here on the earth. Jesus has done what the Father sent him to do, and now he resumes his place in heaven. The enthronement of the Messiah was already foreseen by the Psalms when he wrote, Yahweh says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. And till I make your enemies your footstool for your feet. Psalms chapter 110, verse 1. And the Apostle Paul writes, God has highly exalted him and gave to him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. And finally, the last verse gives a summary of the works of the disciples. Namely that 
They went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. This summation recounts the works and signs of the apostles which are detailed in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Their words were confirmed by the signs that followed. The signs including casting out demons, speaking in new languages, etc. These signs were a confirmation of the authenticity of the disciples' ministry. Salient points of faith and friendship. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ is the culmination of his earthly mission and a return to the Father in heaven. With his ascension, Christ withdraws from the earth and offers a new mockery of his praises amongst us. Remember, his multiple praises, which is free of earthly limitations of time and space. During his human life, as well as his resurrected life, Jesus was encountered as a singular presence in time and space. However, in his ascension, Christ is no longer limited to time and space. He is wherever and whenever he is best. The ascension is not only a great fact, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is also a great factor in our life. It is indicative of a new relationship between our Lord Jesus Christ and ourselves. Ascension, therefore, is not a simple physical relocation of him from earth. It is a consummation of his redemptive work here on earth and a new paradigm of his presence amongst us. Therefore, the ascension invites us to reflect on who Jesus is and who we are as we embark on this mission trajectory to proclaim the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus and to bring all people to faith in the person of Jesus. The feast of the ascension unveils the horizon which opens before us as we continue to live our lives now in his footsteps. At the same time, as he directs us from heaven to preach everything, to bring his good news to the ends of the earth. We are all invited to do our part in order to accomplish the Father's plan. Each of us doing our part as entrusted to our care. Ascension points to God's ongoing plan of redemption. It gives us a glimpse of the loving plan of God for the whole of creation. We are called to be kind and gentle with those we bring the good news of. Each of us faces demons, whether the demon be fear or brokenness, insecurity, selfishness, ego, or abuse. Our love towards others is the way these demons are expelled every day from those that we encounter with special with love. We are victim of a discriminating culture, be it of gender, status, economy, power, money, and even religion. Setting free from these demons is what frees us to be aware that every one of us can only belong to God and nothing else. It means that we can freely and actively take part in life made of relationships. Therefore, speaking in new tongues symbolizes the ability 
we are given to interact with us, living out the gospel we preach, speaking the language of love, which is comprehensible, clear, and welcoming. It means being empowered over all that afflicts people of our time. Expressing ourselves anew in the language of love, guarding ourselves against harsh and unforgiving words, speaking with authority about the law of love and using words which comfort and uplift, ways which include and tolerate, ways which Jesus would have used with a, pro with a prophet or a centurion or a tax collector or ultimately an earthly accuser. Picking up snakes with our hands is a living image. Would rather keep many things hidden or far away from us because they are frightening. And we live our lives always hoping that none of these things we are afraid of will ever happen. Picking up snakes with hands entails not being afraid of what can hurt us. The word of God sets us free from our fears. It allows us to pick up challenges of our life and face them, such as persecution, envy, jealousy, etc. The mission of a disciple, my dear brothers and sisters, is that it could become a bitter cup, indeed, a bitter cup of deadly poison, from which only Jesus can liberate us. And this liberation is a sign for the doubt. The healing which accompanies those who preach the word is the ability to give shelter and protection to others and make them feel utterly accepted. Laying hands means unconditional acceptance and protection to victims of our society, regardless of who they are. There is all kind of sickness in the world. People are hurting, homesick, lonely, alien. Therefore, kindness, love, accompany, presence, and compassion are the tools we bring with when we lay our hands upon those that are ailing. Recovery is not always the same as cure, but Easing pain always aids in recovery. We win against the evil of the world because we have the greatest weapon there ever was. Jesus Christ, the risen one. Jesus Christ, the ascended one. Let us pray. God our Father, help us to become a blessing to one another loving each other unreservedly, forgiving each other without measure, washing each other's feet and lips, and helping the needy without counting the cost. Make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, this day, oh, beautiful.